Right, hello my people. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on uh, with uh, discussing strategies of integration. Uh, now this one is a little bit different because it's a definite integral, but let's go ahead and start with the first one. We'll deal with the second one later. Now, one of the best indications uh, that we're going to use parts is you have two functions, like you have a product of functions, and those two functions are of different families, right? X squared is from, poly, uh, from the polynomial family, sine is from the trigonometric family. So that's a pretty good indication that you're going to use parts, okay? Uh, what we need to do from here is, uh, let's go ahead and use this as an excuse to, to do the tabular method of parts. I mean, X squared is gonna take a couple, it's gonna take at least two rounds to get rid of, right? Uh, and we know that we can set up the stuff in a table uh, if we just do it carefully. And that first, that first is the plus or minus, and then there's the U, and then there's the DV, okay? Now remember, you sort of need to scratch out uh, the, first, the, the first row of those first two columns, because remember that your first, the first term in a parts difference is u times v. Well, basically u and v need to be, so this dv right here is, we're going to take sine 2x, and this is x squared. Well, this is u dv, but this right here is uv. Okay, and of course these start with plus and just change sign as it goes down. This becomes 2x, this becomes 2, and of course you stop doing the table when this turns to 0. Uh, this winds up, when you do it again, 1 fourth sine of 2x, and then positive 1 eighth uh, cosine of 2x. And basically it's these three rows that are your integral. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and test that out. Uh, we have negative 1 half x squared cosine of 2x. Now this one is a negative, but notice that that negative gets sort of unnegativized by this negative. And so we're going to be positive. 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. There's still an x there, sine 2x. And then the next, the last term is gonna be this last row, which is 1 quarter. Uh, cosine of 2x, and I need to evaluate it from 0 to pi over 2. All right, well, that seems like it went really, really easily, and, and actually it did. That was, that was kind of the point. Uh, and so let's go ahead and evaluate this. So we have negative 1 half, and then x squared is going to be pi over 2 squared, and then cosine of 2 times pi over 2 is just cosine of pi. The next term is 1 half pi over 2 and sine of pi. And the last one is going to be 1 fourth uh, cosine of pi. And that is sort of your big F of pi over 2. And then you need to subtract big F of 0 by plugging 0 into all of these places. Uh, well, that's predictably going to make some of the terms here 0. But this last term right here, it doesn't. So be very careful. Now, let's go ahead and cross out all of the terms that are, that are made 0 by the values. Sine of pi is 0. This is a 0 term. Even though cosine of 0 is 1, that 0 right there makes that. This is doubly 0, if one can actually you know, say that. Now, remember that cosine of pi is negative 1. And cosine of 0 is 1. That means that right here I have a negative and a negative together. Okay, that those negatives cancel out. And I have 1 half and pi squared over 4. So I have pi squared over 8. Then I have minus 1 fourth from this term right here. And then I have minus another 1 fourth from this term right here, right? Minus gets distributed across, and this becomes a negative 1 fourth. Now, if I were to actually change these 1 fourths into eights, it's pi squared over 8 minus 2 eights minus 2 eights. 
So it's actually pi squared minus 4, all of that over 8. And if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to go ahead, you're going to get uh, 0.734. Okay, well that's kind of neat. Let's see whether actually the calculator backs that up. Well, let's go ahead and go ahead and plug into y1, our function. Now our function was x squared uh, times sine of 2x. Like that was the integrand. And we're going to go ahead and just plug in the, the integrand of the other problem on the page so I don't have to come back and do that. Okay. Um, so basically this right here is going to be y1 and I plugged this into y2 in preparation for doing that problem as well. Now let's, let's go back to the uh, home screen and we recognize the fact that it's 0 to pi over 2, so alpha f2, 4. Okay, so we got 0 to pi divided by 2. And we're going to do that for y1 with respect to x. And oh my gosh, 0.7337. Okay, just to confirm for you, that's pi squared minus 4 over 8. <gasps> Ta-da! All right, so that's all fun and stuff. Let's do the other one by the tabular method. I think that that'll be instructive. So we're going to be doing this one, not this one. Remember, we plug this into y2. Now, of course, this is x cubed, so it's going to take one more layer uh, or one more iteration of the table in order to actually get it done. And we have the plus or minus column, we have the u column, we have the dv column. This is why I put it vertically, I have no idea. Uh, this gets x'd out, that gets x'd out. And of course, what we have here is cosine of 2x. This is going to be x cubed. Well, when you successively take the derivative, it goes x cubed, 3x squared, 6x, and then 6. Well, if you, if you take the antiderivative of this, it's 1 half sine 2x, and then negative 1 fourth cosine 2x, and then negative 1 eighth sine 2x, and then positive 1 16th cosine 2x. And first row is positive, next is negative, positive, negative. Now we simply need to put it together. The first row gives us 1 half x cubed uh, sine 2x. The second row, negative and a negative, still going to be positive, 3 fourths x squared cosine 2x. This one is starts off with positive, but it has a negative over here as its v, and so it's minus 3 fourths x sine 2x. This one is minus, and there's no negatives right here, so it stays negative. And 6 over 16 reduces to 3 eighths cosine of 2x. And just like the last one, I'm not going to put a plus c because I'm actually evaluating it from 0 to pi over 2. Whew. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit more squinched, but we'll just do the best that we can. Let's go ahead and plug in pi over 2 in for all of this. And I have 1 half pi over 2 cubed sine of pi. 3 fourths pi over 2 squared cosine of pi minus 3 fourths pi over 2 uh, sine of pi and negative 3 eighths cosine of pi. Okay, now let's do it for zero. And predictably, it's going to cause you know the first three terms to be zero because all the first three terms have factors of zero. But just to be obnoxious, let's go ahead and actually uh, cosine of zero and minus three fourths zero times sine of zero and then minus three eighths cosine of cosine of not pi, uh, not theta, but zero, okay? Now, sine of pi and sine of zero are all zero. So sine pi, sine pi, sine zero, sine zero. But this is cosine of zero, but that has a zero squared in it. So really out of the eight things that you sort of plugged in for, 
uh, only three of them wind up being relevant. Okay? Now, cosine pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Now, this right here is minus a negative, so that becomes a positive 3 eighths. This is minus a negative, so it becomes a positive 3 eighths. Now, this right here winds up being negative 3 pi squared over 16 plus 3 eighths, coming from this term right here, plus 3 eighths, coming from this term right here. And what I'm going to get is, of course, these would be 6 over 16 if they had a common denominator. Together they are 12. And you have 12 minus 3 pi squared over 16, which actually turns out to be point one, negative 1.101. .1. And you're thinking, surely not. OK, well, let's check. We're on the main screen right here. Let's go ahead and get ourselves 12 minus uh, pi squared over 16. Oh, it was 3 pi squared. Sorry. Let's go ahead and um, insert a 3. <clears throat> so 12 minus 3 pi squared. That gives us a negative point, <clears throat> one point uh, negative 1.1005. And of course, that rounds up to this. Let's go ahead and do the integral now. We go zero to pi over two. Now remember, we went ahead and put this function uh, that is represented in the integrand into y2. And we're going to do it with respect to x. And lo and behold, it's exactly the same thing. Yay, and there was much rejoicing. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move on uh, to the next page of this test. Uh, this one winds up being, you know, we're not going to use tables, but again, it looks like we're going to be using parts. And the reason, again, that we know that or that we have that suspicion is we have two different classes of functions. We have trig and we have polynomial. Now, in this case, uh, it's not, there's really no surprises. Secant squared is a recognizable derivative, so if I designate it as dv, when I anti-differentiate, that easily creates tangent. Uh, du, if my x is u, then my du is dx. And this winds up being actually rather straightforward. We have x tangent x minus tangent x dx. The only thing you need to remember is the derivative of tangent. And if you don't remember, I mean the antiderivative of tangent. If you don't remember that, you should remember that it is sine over cosine. And if I borrow the negative from here and turn this into a plus sign and basically borrow the negative and put it up there, you notice very quickly that this is plus natural log of cosine x plus c. And that one's pretty straightforward. OK, let's do the other one. It's, you know pretty close to being just a straightforward. Uh, we're going to be doing this one, ignoring this one. Uh, again, our u is going to be our linear term, our linear factor, uh, more specifically. And my dv is going to be secant x tangent x dx, which is a recognizable derivative of secant. And when I put this all together, it's going to be u v minus v du. And I hope that you actually have memorized this uh, because to not memorize it means you have to remember how to derive it, which not exactly the most intuitive derivation. Uh, we have x secant x minus the natural log of the sum of secant x and tangent x plus c. Okay. Um, Let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, a couple more videos on this, uh, but seeing as uh, you're probably using this for class time, that brings us to 45-ish kind of minutes, maybe a little bit shy of that, uh, but I don't want to keep going and, you know, have the, court, have the class period end. 
Um, I'm going to plop these all into a playlist that include the ones that I do after this. Uh, so please, if you, if you need to sort of start thinking through the strategy a little bit more, uh, continue watching when you go home. Uh, and I will, uh, to the extent that I am capable and have time, I will put up additional videos just sort of narrating and talking through and, and sort of displaying the logic uh, of why one would choose one method over another. Uh, and that's kind of basically we learn the techniques in 7.1 to 7.4 and then we learn the strategies of which one to choose in 7.5. And I think it's not all textbooks actually do that 7.5 section, but I think it's really, really useful as sort of a bringing it all together kind of exercise. So if you have any questions, as always, please do shoot me an email. Bye.